like to call the regular village board meeting to order for the village of Shorewood on June the 23rd in the year 2020. Uh, would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Diane, roll call, please. Mayor Chapman. Here. Dan Anderson. Here. Steve Brockman. Here. C.C. DeBold. Here. Barb Kirkland. Here. Tony Luciano. Tony, you up there? Unmute your phone. He was there earlier. Can you hear me? I don't know. Yeah, now, now we can. Okay, I'm here. And Dan Warren. Here. Okay. Let the record show that uh, either on location at the Village Hall or joining the meeting electronically, we have a full quorum. Uh, so the regular village business can be accomplished tonight. Okay, are there any citizens that wish to address the village board? We have none. This is Carol Wagner. Hi. This is Carol Wagner. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, Carol. Carol Wagner, the president of the Shorewood Chamber of Commerce. Uh, uh, if I can, I, I would uh, just like to let uh, notify the, the full board that the Shorewood Crossroads Festival, slated for August 7th, 8th, and 9th this year, has been canceled uh, due to the COVID pandemic. Okay, any any other announcements? Hasn't been put off, it's just canceled for the year, right? It is canceled for the year, yes. Yeah, sorry to hear that, Carol. Uh, I know you are. Uh, Mayor, this is Dave Silverman. Yeah. Mayor, I think um, I just wanted to get into the record as I, uh, I believe you made a determination that yeah. persuade to the new Public Act 101-640 that it wouldn't be practical or prudent at this time to require all members of the village board to physically attend the village board meeting because of uh, public health concerns. Um, and that's a determination that you have to make pursuant to the new law. Is that, did I say that correctly? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry, Dave. I, I, uh, I knew I had already read it uh, over my email with the administrator I had looked it over, but I didn't notice that it had to be it had to be read at the beginning of the meeting. So I'll do that now. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. I've determined, pursuant to Public Act 101-0640, that it is not practical or prudent to require all members of the village board to physically attend the village board meeting because of public health concerns. Also have another one here to cover our committees. Uh, so as mayor, I've determined, pursuant to the act that was just uh, addressed, the duration of the gover governor's emergency declaration and all extensions thereof related to the COVID-19 pandemic, that because of public health concerns, that it is neither practical nor prudent to require all members of the Board of Trustees and the members of various villages, committees, and commissions to attend meetings in person, and that all members may attend meetings electronically as permitted by the Public Act. This determination shall remain in full force and effect until further notice from me or the expiration of the governor's emergency declaration in Will County, Illinois. Clear to everyone? Okay. Is that covered? Mayor, and I'd just like to remind the village clerk that all votes um, 
uh, during these electronic meetings have to be by roll call vote. There can be no all in favor votes, and uh, be sure that you keep a recording of the of the board meeting. Okay, she has it. Thank you, Dave. Anything Thank else? You, yeah, anything else that you'd like to cover in that uh, uh, thought pattern? Uh, no, not really. It would appear that we can all hear each other, and uh, I assume that, that you can hear me fine and everybody else who's on the call, and I can certainly hear you fine. Okay. Uh, thanks for that. Okay. All right. Are there any other citizens that wish to address the village board? If not, I'm going to move on to tonight's consent agenda, which consists of the approval of the special meeting minutes for May the 28th, approval of a regular meeting minutes on June the 9th, approval of accounts payable in the amount of $328,776.55. Number four, approval of a payment in the amount of $173,198.93 to P.T. Farrell Construction Company for work completed on the 2020 MFT Street Improvement Program. And finally, approval of a contract in the amount of 18000 with Melrose Pyrotechnics for our fireworks display this year, which, as everybody's been alerted to, is now moved to the 4th of July. Are there any items on tonight's consent agenda a trustee would like removed for further review? Or are there any items that you have a question on? Motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay, Diane, roll call, please. Warren? Yes. DeBold? Yes. Kirkland? Yes. Brockman? Yes. Anderson? Yes. And Luciano? Yes. The consent agenda stands approved as read. So I'll move, move on to reports and communications. Uh, any communications to the board, Diane? Uh, yes, there is. Um, I received uh, a thank you note uh, on behalf of uh, Betts Berry's family. They would like to thank the village board and staff for the overwhelming outpouring of love, support, and prayers during this difficult time. And because of the mask, who, who was that? I'm, I'm sorry. It was Cookie's mother, oh, correct? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other communications? No, that's all. Okay. I have no report. I have no proclamations. So I'd like to move on to our order of business. Order of business, number one, consideration for approval of an ordinance creating an additional Class A liquor license. This is up for first read. It's, it's mine. Uh, Chrissy, uh, could, could you bring us up to speed on this, on this one, the business application? I'm sorry, Mayor, I, I wasn't hearing you. Did you ask for Kelly? Yeah, Kelly, I'm sorry. Hey. Oh, that's okay, I was having a hard time hearing. Um, so we have Goodies to Go that has requested a liquor license. They are going to be located in the former Casa Maya location on Jefferson Street. And they are uh, requesting a Class A, which is a tavern license with live entertainment. Hmm. Uh, been involved in this one as we've been going along as the liquor commissioner and uh, yes they they kept up in their their uh, liquor license status that they wanted but these people are relatively new uh, at it and they wanted to turn it into kind of a sports bar type 
activity with food service on the inside, uh, which allows them then to come in and apply for the gaming license through us. Uh, understood, as, as they got educated in the system, they know where they had to go. Uh, when you look at where that is and, and the surrounding areas right around them, uh, it, it looks to be a good spot for that type of uh, uh, business, as far as I'm concerned. Somebody might think differently, but as far as I'm concerned, it looks like a good spot. Uh, again, we don't like to see any of our strip malls with vacancies. And these people look like they can bring in a business, hopefully it's a go, and hopefully they don't turn into a problem. Uh, I think it's a good spot also. My one question is, what kind of entertainment were they looking for? Because it's not really big enough for a lot of uh, type they, of entertainment, right? They, they can put in some mariachis or, you know, yeah. three-piece band or, okay. you know. Karaoke. Karaoke. Okay. I was thinking, you know, uh, you know, bands like Scooters has had and... Bad yeah, Rocks. yeah, it's not really... I don't, I don't that. think it's suited for anything like that. It'd be more like Bed Rocks when Bed Rocks have, has somebody in there. Uh, yeah, but they got, they got a lot more space there than Bed Rocks, so. though. Yeah, so it's going to have to be kind of... Uh, yeah, maybe a one-man band, I guess, or something, yeah, would be okay. Are they just occupying one we unit? Into, uh, this one we were looking at tomorrow at karaoke. Maybe yeah, just. Oh, he's on the call. The who? He's on the call. He said karaoke. Okay. Oh, okay. Glad to have you with us. No, thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, you going to still do a food truck out of there? Yes, I actually have a food truck business that's going to run out of there and it caters to the local uh, breweries on um, Santa Ana, Plainfield, uh, Romeoville, New Lenox. Okay. Any other questions for this gentleman? I, I have a question. So by permitting live entertainment, I'm just concerned of the proximity of the homes in the area there. I don't, I don't want this to turn into a scooter situation like we've had in the past. So... How do we? How are we sure that that's not going to happen? I don't uh, think there's enough uh, right space. Right at this period. point, I'm only looking at uh, karaoke, so I don't think it's going to get any worse than that. I don't plan on having any live bands or anything like that. I just thought uh, uh, somebody wants to come in, have a drink, um, have a bite to eat, and maybe sing a little karaoke, something fun. Well, that when we had the um, the liquor license at my Tierra or whatever that the name of that place is on up by Home Depot, and they had like acoustic type music. Is that also a Class A license? Then is that the same? Um, I know Me Tierra had a Class I that they didn't renew. I'm not sure if they had the A. Well, I is for the machines, though, right? I is live entertainment. Oh, well, I is live entertainment. I is okay. The, yeah, I is okay. the I is the Car yeah. like the, the karaoke, the acoustics, okay. stuff of that nature. Okay, okay. I had them mixed up then. Okay, I'm okay with it. Okay. But they both say live entertainment. What are you referring to? License for a tavern permitting live entertainment, which is a Class A license, and Class I for live entertainment. Right. The I gives them the live entertainment. Yeah. But so does the A. Yeah, I... I, I, I mean, the way this is written, am uh, I reading it wrong? I, I think it may be a typo. I think it's typed yeah. correctly. Okay, right. I'm just, yeah. the way I'm reading it, it's... That is a typo. Okay. Yeah. you got to have the eye. Sir, how many, how many spaces at 805 West Jefferson are you going to occupy? A uh, unit? Yes, how many units? Uh, the, uh, it's the unit E, E, F, G, and H is what consists of the uh, property. Can, can you say that one more time? E, F, G, and H. Unit E, F, G, and H is what consists of the property for um, the old Casamaya. Okay. Thank so you. it's the same space. The same taking space. the same space. Then. Okay. Four units. 
how many square feet does that encompass the, those spaces? Do you know? Roughly around 2,100 square feet, I believe it is. It's still not. And how many parking spaces are allocated for this space? Or are you allowed to use the whole lot? Yes, I'm allowed to use the whole lot. Hello? Okay. Are you going to enlarge the bar? And this is, this is more of a personal question than a, than a legal question. What was that? Are you going to enlarge the bar area? No. No. Okay. All right. No more. I'll make the motion to approve the additional Class A liquor license and the Class I for 805 West Jefferson. Okay. We're going to wave. What, uh, yeah, thank you, and wave the second read. Back it. Okay, Diane, roll call, please. Brockman? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Kirkland? Yes. DeBold? Yes. Warren? Yes. And Luciano? Yes. Okay, welcome aboard. Uh, good luck. Hope everything turns out much, for you. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, when do you plan to be open? Don't hang up yet. <laughs> uh, I'm working on it right now. Hopefully, hopefully here soon, within the next couple of weeks. Okay. All right. You won't be disappointed, I guarantee you. It's within walking distance for me, so that makes it good. Uh. <laughs> yes, not. Nice. I think I'm going to do the village of Sorewood uh, well. Like I said, I really appreciate you, appreciate you having me there. And uh, uh, I hope to uh, show you pretty soon. Okay. Well, again, welcome welcome to Shorewood. I hope everything works out for you and you become a good neighbor. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay, I'm going to move on to business item number two. <clears throat> Consideration for waiving rent payments by the Shorewood Chamber of Commerce, Mr. Kulata. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, so since the last meeting, uh, when we previously talked about this, um, some additional information and, and developments have occurred. Uh, most notably, the, the Chamber's Crossroad Festival has been canceled, as we heard earlier this, uh, this evening. Um, so that's their, their largest fundraising event. Um, some additional information about the chamber has been provided in, in the memo uh, related to their tax status, uh, their membership. Uh, so we, we have had conversations um, to better understand you know, what they do and don't do in terms of lobbying. Um, they are not, as a nonprofit, they're, they're not uh, allowed to do lobbying. Um, they do not um, uh, pay for lobbying services, uh, nor do they pay dues to the U.S. Uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, in discussing this further with Attorney Silverman, uh, there does not appear to be any uh, conflict of interest or legal impediment if the village were to uh, reduce or waive rent uh, payments the chamber would make to the village. And I'm sure Attorney Silverman can expound upon that if you are interested. Um, and lastly, um, as uh, the Chamber President Carol Wagner um, has mentioned that what, what the, the request that she'd like to make at this time is, is that the village waive rent payments for the time period in which they really have not been able to utilize Village Hall uh, for, for their gatherings. So we're referring to uh, March through basically June now, now that we're leaving phase three and, and we'll be entering phase four here in just a few days. So, if that were uh, the wish of the board, um, you know, we're talking about uh, waiving $2,137.12. So I'm happy to uh, entertain any questions you may have. You know, I don't know how long they've been here, but it uh, seems to me like they're a pretty good fit in the village. And um, I don't think we want to lose them. Uh, maybe they'll go look somewhere else if we don't... Uh, kind of help them out a little bit. So I'm, I would be in favor of uh, keeping them satisfied, whatever they want. So. Yeah, I mean, I, they couldn't occupy their space, so I'm okay with it. I mean, if, if anyone else has comments, I'll make 
I'll make the motion to uh, uh, waive monthly rent payments for uh, short area chamber of commerce March through end of June, totaling two thousand one thirty-seven and twelve cents. Second. Okay, Diane. Roll call. Warren. Yes. DeBold. Yes. Kirkland. Yes. Brockman. Yes. Anderson. Yes. And Luciano. Yes. Okay. Agenda item number two has been approved. Moving on to our final business item. Consideration of changes to the utility relief program and utility billing. Uh, Mr. Kulata again. Thank you again, Mayor. Um, so uh, just a brief recap of where we're at. Um, so we, we uh, the board had created this program uh, several months ago. Um, you know, and it expanded it again a few weeks after its creation. Uh, so thus far, we've had approximately 135 residents that have uh, been approved for the credit um, on their utility bills. So that's approximately $25,000 that's been credited to those individuals. And uh, there's still a couple months, uh, or still a month uh, for some of those. Uh, they've only received the one month uh, credit thus far. So uh, I think that this program has achieved the, the goal uh, which it was created for, uh, and that was to provide some immediate relief to those who are perhaps in most uh, need. Um, and uh, per the resolution that created the program, um, it would continue until the board were to take action. Okay, so it didn't have an automatic sunset date. So uh, what I am recommending is that we uh, stop the, the uh, acceptance of new applications at the end of this month. Uh, that would give uh, residents a, another week to submit an application. Uh, this would allow for anyone who is approved uh, as of June 30th to still receive the full two months worth of, of the credit if they are, uh, can demonstrate eligibility. Um, so. I'm happy to entertain questions about that particular part. Uh, I, my thought was is that we would address this issue first and then perhaps talk about the utility billing uh, after that. No, I'm perfectly fine with this. I think oh. we needed, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm perfectly fine with this. I think we needed to set a date instead of letting it sit out there. So I'm, I'm good. Yep, I'm, le I'm good with it too, let it go. Are we still getting applications or not too many now? They've kind of it's, fallen off. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there, there may have been one or two in the past week. It's significantly uh, slowed down. Okay. Yeah, I think we need to put an end date to it. I, I, you know, I think it was a good idea and a good thing, but I think, you know, at some point we need to put an end to it. So, so if that's the consensus of the board, what I would ask is, is that you entertain a a motion that would formally uh, set that deadline uh, for new applications to be June 30th. I'll make that motion to end this on June 30th. Second. Okay, Diane, roll call, please. Luciano? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Brockman? Yes. Kirkland? Yes. DeBold? Yes. And Warren? Yes. Okay. okay agenda moving. Item number well, at least part of agenda item number three has been approved. Now move on to utility billing. Okay, thank you. Um, so as you know, since March, what we did is uh, we changed uh, how we're handling our billing. Uh, specifically, we suspended the imposition of late fees for utilities as well as shutting uh, folks' uh, water off. Um, so at, over this time or since March, basically, you know, we've seen um, our delinquent or past due balances more than double. Um, so what um, I am recommending at this time would be to resume imposing that late fee on all past due accounts as of July 21st. Um, and then also to resume shutoffs for past due accounts as of August 18th, unless the the resident um, would set up a payment plan, uh, which is very typical, something that we've been doing uh, for a long time. Uh, so this would be basically a transition to what our normal utility billing process has been. 
Uh, one question: How come you're letting it go so far out? Why, why August and why July? Well, par part of it has to do with the sequence of events in terms of uh, the billing process, and you know, so I think it's first of all, I, I recommend that we we provide some advance notice, okay, just just to kind of have people get um, aware of and prepare for okay. these changes, and then also. Um, these are dates I talked with uh, Finance Director Burkholder, um, and she can probably elaborate on the specific details of why this is a better time than another. Okay. Uh, but that's the reason why we chose this. Mainly those dates. probably because of the billing cycle, then, it sounds like. Largely, I believe that's true, yes. Right. How, many, uh, how many delinquents are we looking at? Um, and I'm not sure if you have that number off the top of your head, but it's. Uh, Did you hear the question, Ann? Yeah, I did. Thank you. Um, on average, we send out about 300 past due notices each month and then shut off around 30 customers. Um, if we were to send shut off notices out right now, we would have substantially more than 300. Um, I'd say probably closer to 500. Mm. Um, but I believe part of that reason is that... Um, you know, people know that they have that that cushion right now. Yeah. So are we are we saying they're delinquent since March? Is that is that? Uh, what, no, or they were delinquent the prior to March. It, it varies. There's some people yeah. who have been that whole time period, but there's also people who who in the past thirty to sixty days as well. Okay. It, it's a it's a range. Um, <laughs> And it depends. Almost seems like they're taking advantage of the situation. Um, Sounds like it. I think we yeah. better get that nipped in the bud immediately. Hey, hey, hello, this is Dave. I wonder if on behalf of those of us on the phone, I could ask that the folks at the meeting really try to talk into your microphones. Uh, it sounds like everybody has a mask on and it's, getting more and more difficult to hear unless you're really up to the mic. Will do, sir. Thank you. I'll do my best. Uh, <laughs> can we just pull them out a little bit, Dave? Uh, that sounds a lot better, Rick. I can hear you fine right now. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll make the motion to resume late fees past due for past due accounts on July 21 and resume shutoffs for accounts uh, past due on August 18 unless payment plans are established. So none oh, of these, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, none of the delinquent people were part of the program we did. Do we know that? Right. I believe the credits are, were applied to past due accounts, but I'd, I'd ask Ann to you know what I, You know what I'm asking, right? So we're going to... So if yeah. we gave them credits... But then we're going to charge them delinquent for the months we gave them credit for. Uh, right? And okay, that's what yeah. I wanted to make sure that we weren't getting mixed up into that. There is no delinquent for this. For I know, but yeah. I wanted to make sure that that was straightened. Yeah, in there straight. Right. Okay. So to to answer your question, it could be possible that someone participated in this program for two months, but had an outstanding balance prior to those two months. Correct. Okay. So. It is possible that someone participated in that program but still has a past due balance. Um, mm. We're certainly willing to work with anyone that wants to set up a payment plan, um, especially if they've been impacted and needs more assistance than just two months. We can work with what they're able to do. So what, what we want to do is um, get people's attention and get them on a path to becoming current. Good. Okay. Yeah. So we so we've still been sending out the delinquent note. I have a question of Ann. Uh, do you have a problem with these people cooperating or contacting you in order to make uh, a, a plan with them, or do they ignore you, or are you able to talk to them? No, we're able to talk to them. Um, you know, we're the phone number is everywhere, and. It's even been suggested that maybe we put a notice on the top of the bills that if you, you know, if you need a payment arrangement or have any questions about your bill, um, to call in. So, you know, we're, 
we're available to take those or, or arrangement. Thank you, Ann. Thank you. You already had the motion on the. Yeah, yeah I was just say if you want, I'll go through it again if anybody wants it. Oh, Otherwise, I'll I made the, the motion. Second, though. Oh, there you go. Okay. And Luciano. I'm sorry, I'm mute. Yes. Warren. Yes. DeBold. Yes. Kirkland. Yes. Brockman. Yes. And Anderson. Yes. Second half of agenda item number three been approved. Uh, we're going to move on to reports. Trustee Anderson, Public Works. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, a lot of things going on this time of year. Uh, right now, we're still working on a lot of the storm cleanup from uh, late May. Uh, it's not all at once. It's as we have time and can get in there and get that work done. Uh, a lot of tree stumps that are getting taken out and ground. Um, mosquito control uh, tablets or biscuits have been thrown into the, the uh, wet basins and the, and the detention ponds um, to control the, lar the mosquito larvae. Uh, they completed the annual uh, seal crack program that's been done, that's wrapped up for the year. And there's been some sinkhole repair, storm sewer cleanouts, uh, and then the MFT is moving along. Possibly, uh, they will be in. Uh, PT Fair will be in by the end of the week to start re putting a new uh, surfaces down. They're trying to beat the weather, uh, so uh, maybe by the end of the week. Shouldn't and have it, to worry about being above 40 degrees. I no, guess. No, uh, <laughs> no, it's more of a rain. <laughs> and then the last thing is, and this is kind of something we've been looking for, waiting on for uh, uh, quite a number of years. The Forest Reserve is uh, beginning to work uh, for the bridges, uh, for the bike trails over the DuPage in 55. And that was supposed to start yesterday. I don't, I haven't been over by Black Road in 55 since then. Do you know if they, I know they got some preliminary, preliminary work to do and set up. Yeah. But that was supposed to start yesterday, so. Yes, I believe the lane closure has been established. Is it, okay. There was nobody working there today, but the lanes were closed. Okay, were they, okay. Yeah. So that's good news, I mean, we've been working with uh, the Forest Reserve and, uh, you know, mainly the Forest Reserve and I guess the state of Illinois and, you know, joint effort to try to get this going. And, and uh, I'm glad to see it finally going because, you know, that bike trail uh, going over 55 in the DuPage River connects Shorewood to the west side of Joliet by bike, you know, through Hamill Woods. And, you know, you can get out there up in, on Windstone into, into uh, Hamill Woods and all the way over there now when, when this is completed. So it's going to be nice. Mm. And that's all I have. So. Hey, quick question. You mentioned uh, sinkholes. Mm -hmm. Did anybody, who's going to do the one out here by the village hall at the entrance? Uh, it's the uh, parking lot. It's the parking lot? Yeah. Is that, we're going to do it? Are we going to have the contractor come through and repair that? Just, I'll let, I know I'll there's let a nice one right at the edge of the lot. <laughs> yeah, I'll let, I'll let Noriel answer that. Okay. Hi, good evening. This is Noriel. Yeah. Uh, actually, that's going to be handled by Public Works. We're having that scheduled this week or next week. Nope, oh, sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions for Noriel or Dan? If not, we'll move on. Trustee Brockman, Planning and Zoning Commission. Okay, Mayor, thank you very much. Our next meeting will be July 1st, and it sounds like we will be able to ha uh, have it both virtually and in person. So uh, that'll be a nice change, so July 1st. And uh, three agenda items presently uh, from Kelly's fine report here. I'll read uh, conditional use for truck and trailer repair at 301 Almond Dodge for on-site trucking. And uh, this will be the final continuation of that public hearing. Conditional use for a garage for storage at 400 Earl Road for an elite ambulance. Plan unit development for a building addition at 1006 Geneva Road for United Engineering. And possibly uh, Route 52 and County Line Road project um, may, may get in time. So uh, we may have that one also. And um, 
While I got the uh, floor here, I would like to uh, thank Administrator Collada and uh, John. Let me see if I can mess your name up here, John Komarowski. Did I do that? Uh, they set up a meeting this morning with a point blank, shoot point blank, and we toured the building and seen what $37,000 of um, additional soundproofing look like. And um, we were there before they opened up, so I went back about two fifteen. I went back about two fifteen, and uh, sat behind the building. There was a northwest wind, so it would have been perfect for hearing. And uh, I reported to John. I didn't hear a thing, other than the roar from I fifty five. It's just uh, it's just unbelievable the roar from that road. Yeah, it's definitely. Right. But. Uh, in my opinion, if you can't sell your condo back there, it won't be because of the shoot point. It, it's going to be because of I-55 is what it looks like to me. But John says he do hear it once in a while, but boy, it's... And they've also makes, made some other changes inside where there's two shooting ranges. I've never been in the place. This is the first time. But the, the heavy artillery has been moved one slot over, so there's an additional wall now. So maybe that'll help too. So, uh, but they they're going a long way to be uh, partners here in the village. So I I commended all 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 of that we met there this morning. So great. And uh, also want to thank Public Works. I was very concerned about the new trees on River Road, and they uh, went ahead and watered. I don't know how many gallons per tree, but um, if we don't get another shot in the next four or five days, maybe they'll need another shot next week. So, but I appreciate what they've done so far. So, so next re next uh, meeting July first. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Any questions for Steve? Okay. Uh, Trustee Kirkland, Parks and Recreation. Thank you. Um, tennis courts at Four Seasons and the disc golf course at Shore Road Park are open. Please adhere, adhere to posted guidelines for use. The Shorewood, summer, the summer Shorewood connection is available digitally. Information will continually be updated as we move through the Reopen Illinois plan. So please check back for new information on COVID-19 on our events and our programming. The community-wide cleanup has been rescheduled for July 28th. And we do have a couple of upcoming events. Kite, face, kite Fest is this weekend, June 27th. Grab your kite and head outside. Let's flood the skies with kites from our own backyards. Tag at Village of Shorewood on Facebook and at Shorewood IL on Instagram in your photos for a chance to be featured in our stories that day. And our Children's Fishing Derby will run from June 27th to July 6th. We're going virtual on this one. Fish from anywhere and send us photos of what you catch. For details on how to participate, visit our website and be sure to register by June 26th. So as we move into the next phase, there may be some updates to the, um, on the digital calendar. So be sure and check back for the updates. That's my report. Thank you. Uh, Trustee Luciano, Citizens Advisory. Some of the uh, members of the Citizens Advisory Committee had uh, asked if it would be possible for us to have a meeting during the summer since we had to cancel the March, April, and May meeting because of the uh, corona pandemic. Uh, I uh, sent out an email to all the members to try to get their input to see if they'd be interested in attending, and I wanted uh, I didn't get the feedback yet. I asked them to reply in a couple of days. But I wanted to ask the board uh, for their approval also if we could possibly uh, have a meeting on July 23rd or one in either July 23rd or August 27th. I didn't realize that phase four didn't start until July 26th, so I probably would move it to August uh, 27th. So it would be within the start. guidelines of uh, start the governor's uh, guideline. Uh, so I was wondering if there, if anyone would have any problem with uh, us moving forward with a meeting probably in August 
And, again, I'm waiting for consensus back to see if people would be able to make it or who's interested in coming. And I would come back to the board in the uh, next meeting to tell to advise you whether we would be having it or not. So I, I'd just like to know if anyone would have any uh, problem with us doing that. Uh, I think the silence tells you something, trustee. I'm uh, sorry, I didn't hear you, Mayor. There's no problem and, uh, here, okay? The silence that you hear is is an okay, whatever you can, whatever you can get going. I was gonna tell All right, that, that sounds great. And uh, again, I'll get back to you at the uh, next meeting, letting you know what, what we're going to do. All right, I you. think you need to realize it's June 26. No, no, I'm not talking about. Uh, you said phase four was going to be ending in July, July 26. Yes. No. So uh, we'd probably be looking at the August. All right, never mind. <laughs> never mind. Thank you. Not worth it. Okay. That's all I have. But, uh, okay. Uh, remember to stay on with us, uh, you know, when we're done with this meeting here in a few minutes. Uh, we're going to take about a six to eight minute break to give the technicians a chance to switch over to the uh, cow meeting and make sure the tapes are okay for our clerk. And uh, so don't leave, all right? Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, just something, I, you know, not under my report, uh, but Friday the 26th, we're moved to phase four. I uh, had the chief print these out earlier today and they're kind of uh, like a like a short guide to everything that the state recommends and if you look at it you'll find that it's minimum recommendations almost uh, on every item so and like we've said in the past None of them are, are laws. They're 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 not statutes of the state. They're they're basically guidelines that the uh, DCEO put together along with the IDPH. And uh, but when it, when I kind of looked at this number one here, which is the first thing that pops out. Uh, the test, anybody Anybody got anything on that one that they would like to pass through to the board? Okay, wear face coverings during the meeting event except while seated and maintain social distancing of at least six feet except while seated. So apparently you can sit on somebody's lap. Okay, <laughs> from what I'm reading, and uh, so I I don't know, but but what I would request is that we use common sense, and this epidemic, whatever you want to call it, although, and I thank God, Shorewood's been spared, uh, pretty pretty much. That doesn't mean that we're out of the woods yet I know some people would like to say so and they go back to the scam and all this stuff but what we really need to do is use common sense and err on the side of safety that's what I plan to do uh, when phase four hits Friday I'm sure come Saturday I'm going to walk into Mariano's to get my roaster chicken for the weekend, and I'll and and there's going to be people with the masks already off. Uh, I hope that's not the case, but I have a, a very eerie feeling that it will be. Uh, so, at any rate, I would just like to request that people use 
let's use common sense and err on the side of safety for not yourself but for others. And uh, that's about all I have to say about that. Uh, we are sending out all the all the qualifications. Kelly, uh, would you like to speak to that? What you're doing with the businesses? Yes, thank you, Mayor. So um, we are still reviewing the guidelines that have been published, and I've been in contact with DCEO to clarify some of the um, capacity. Um, restrictions and so we're trying to make sure that all of the businesses are well aware of um, the allowances and then the restrictions as we move into phase four. I think the, the bigger changes are really going to be in the restaurants and bars as for the indoor seating as well as um, health facilities have the ability now to have indoor classes and so um, we're pushing information out to them, and then as there are questions, we're working with DCEO to get some clarification and making sure that the staff here also understands those uh, restrictions and allowances. And so we'll continue to do that as we progress through um, phase four. I suspect that we'll be fielding much more, many more questions um, here in the, in the next week as things get going again. Um, but we'll continually revisit with the businesses and see how things are going and get clarifications as needed. Okay. Any questions for Kelly on this? Uh, I guess, you know, everybody's learning as we go. And like I say, I, almost everything we get are just guidelines. So, like I say, if we just err on the side of caution, uh, I think as far as I'm concerned, that's the best road to take. The, the other road is to say this has all never really happened. But I, I don't know where they're hiding 126,000 corpses right now, but they must be doing a good job of it, okay? Uh, so, uh, Chief, anything to say about that from the EMA side? Uh, no, sir. We're still doing good. Uh, the 60404 zip code is, at this point had 121 confirmed cases, no deaths that we can attribute here. And uh, we're sitting fine with staff and facilities, PPE equipment and everything else. Now that everybody's going to uh, transition to phase four, we'll do another uh, deep dive into what our burn rate's going to be, and we'll make sure we're prepared for any contingencies that come up in the fall so that we don't get Spot flat foot with supplies or anything like that. Uh, have, have you gotten any report from the hospitals that uh, anything that they've seen over the past couple of weeks as we as we loosened up that even into phase three? <laughs> well, I was at Silver Cross and at the resident for a couple of days, and uh, there was a lot of talk about it. Um, the The census for COVID patients is much lower than it was a month ago, and that, that's all improving. Um, the, the metrics that we were enjoying uh, maybe six weeks ago where it showed, like, you know, respirator capacity and all that stuff specific to our hospital, that information disappeared and got rolled into the statewide metrics. And as you can see from those that come out in the sit reps, our, our numbers relative to hospital capacity are quite good um, for the Northeast region. I have no reason to believe that St. Joe's or Silver Cross or Morris or any more burden than anywhere else. Uh, I haven't heard anything like that. So um, when I talk to Howard and Andy at the fire department, they're not concerned about anything uh, resource-wise. So I would say we're in good shape. Okay, thank you. Any questions for the chief? Any questions at, about anything? If not, then I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. No move. Second. Uh, Diane? Yeah, second. Kirkland? Diane. Yes. Warren? Yes. DeBold? Yes. Rockman? Yes. Anderson? Yes. And Luciano? Yes. Okay, we stand adjourned for, let's, uh,
about five minutes to let's uh, kick off the, the, the committee of the whole meeting, okay?